Hi folks, I'm Allie with the Potomac Bead Company and I'm gonna show you how to do our icicle necklace here with spikes. So the spike beads are really fun. These that I'm using are seven by 17 millimeters. We also sell them smaller in a five by eight size. I like the bigger ones for this. They're really trendy and in style. A lot of different shows that you will watch, the characters are wearing these spike necklaces. When you make them in pretty colors too, they make more of a soft look rather than their intended kind of spiked look or more of a goth look that's going with it. So I like to make them in softer colors that we're working with. So what are you gonna need for this icicle necklace is you're gonna need some spikes. If you choose the smaller spikes or the bigger spikes, that's up to you, it doesn't matter. You're gonna need two colors, at least two colors of 11 OC beads. It's gonna make it easier to keep track of what you're doing with the two colors. In addition to the spikes, you're gonna need some four millimeter beads. I'm using some Swarovski crystals in four millimeter. You could also use some Czech glass, that's kinda of up to you. I might actually alternate between the two as I'm working with them. If you don't want the whole necklace to be spiked, which um, the icicle drop kind of looks the prettiest in the uh, center and then freeing up the back so that you don't have the spikes going the whole way up the back, we use some chain. So I have some chain here in a brass color that I'm using. I have some findings to go along with it if you are attaching to brass. I have some wire protectors and um, some jump rings as well as my lobster clasp. Needle and thread wise, I'm using thread in the .008 in wildfire beading thread. You can use .006 as well. Because I'm using light colors and you can see through them, I'm using the white thread. Needle wise, I'm using a size 10 English beading needle and you're gonna need just one needle for this project. Lastly, I have some cutters here. So you can do wire cutters, you can do scissors, it's up to you. I have a really nice pair of wire cutters that cuts the thread wonderfully. And then I'm gonna use a needle nose pliers that's gonna to help to kind of flatten out the thread so that way I can put it more easily into my needle. Depending on how long you want this section to be, that's gonna determine the length of your spikes. This section here, which is about six and a half inches, is one whole strand of the spikes as we sell them. I'm gonna do my section just a little bit shorter and I have them in that green luster color. The four millimeter Swarovskis that I've chosen are light Colorado Topaz. I have the Buttercream Ceylon in the 11O as well as the Sparkle Metallic Gold Lined Crystal and that's what I'll be working with. And like I said, I might throw in some of these um, faceted four millimeter bronze uh, check beads. And that's what we're gonna be working with to get started for our little icicle spike necklace. So the first thing I've done is gotten my little piles of my beads ready that I'm working with. And I'm also cut my thread. The thread I'm gonna to cut to about five feet. And I cut it to five feet and I've threaded the needle onto the thread. I am gonna add a stop bead and I have a six millimeter bead right here that I'm gonna use as my stop bead. I take it down to the bottom of my thread, leaving yourself about six inches at the end to put on your clasp or to add your chain to it. I'm gonna sew back up through that stop bead two times and that's gonna stop my beads from falling off the end. Give a nice tight pull and there you have that. What we're gonna do is actually start at the end and this builds lengthwise as we're working with it. So we build the whole thing as we're working on it. And the first thing you're gonna add, so we have two colors of seed beads. We're gonna have color A and color B of seed beads. One seed bead is gonna be on the side of your daggers or your spikes as well as in the middle. So that's generally the same color when you're working with it. So I'm gonna make that color my buttercream color. The other color that's going to be used is my metallic or my gold lined here. And for that, I'm gonna use that on the sides of my project. Actually, I'm gonna switch them. We'll use these on the sides of my crystals and down the side so that it has more cream than the brown color. So what I'm gonna to do to get started and working along with it is we're gonna use a color A, one of my four millimeters, and another color A. In addition to that, I'm gonna put on four of my B color. One, two, three, four. And let that drop down next to my project. I'm going to start now with my actual project. So I like a little bit of length before I start. And here's going to go into our project. So that's going to be just the end. So my actual pattern is going to be one of my A color, a four millimeter, one A color. One B color, 
and then I'm going to do four of my A. Let that all drop down next to the start of my project. What I'm going to do then is add one of my B colors, which is going to be my gold, and the gold color, the golden brown color, is going to sit right next to my spike. On the other side of my spike is going to be another one of the gold color. So you have basically on the side of your four, you have A, B, four A's, a B, a spike, and a B. I'm going to let that all go back next to my project. I'm going to add four more of my little cream color. And then to circle it up and to start my little row, I'm going to go back in a circular fashion through my B color bead that was right after my four millimeter. What that's going to do is turn that around into a little circle. I'm going to continue my pattern by adding a B color here, or an A color, and then a crystal, and then an A color. Letting that drop down next to my pattern, and you can see the start of it. Again, I'm going to add one of my golden ones. I'm going to add one, two, three, four of my creams, one gold, and another one of my spikes. When I come to the other side here, I'm going to grab one of the golden ones next to the spike, the one that's closest to the spike that I'm adding. I'm going through that bead, and what that's going to do is connect it into my little pattern here. On go four more of my A color, and then I'm going to grab that golden bead there at the top and circle back through. And that attaches my next spike. After each one you want to give a nice little tight grab so that way they lay in place and you don't have a lot of play going on in between them. So continuing on the way then I'm just going to continue with that same pattern. I've already added another one but you're going to do your cream color four millimeter and then a cream color and then your golden color on Once you have that, you're going to do four creams. And if you really do hate seeing a lot of thread and one gold, what you can do is you can use 15 O's here at the bottom. The other thing you can do is space out the top a little bit more by adding an extra one of the colors that's closest to your four millimeter round. I'm going to let that all drop next to my project. Then instead of adding another gold on the other side, here's where you pick up the one from the previous spike, give a nice tight pull. This is one of those projects where the thread does want to pull away, so one of the hard things is kind of keeping it tight. After each spike, you want to make sure to give a nice tight pull, especially before you go in and do that V pattern there. You're going to then add your four of your A color, go back through, in my case it's my gold, and then get ready to continue that same pattern over and over and over again. Oh, and making sure not to get twisted in your spike there, or your dagger. And there I have it, and I'm going to keep going with that pattern, getting the look and design of my piece. So here I am at the end of adding all my daggers, and what I'm going to do is just end with my pattern. And I'm actually with my chain not liking the distance there, so I'm just going to end with my seed bead just right after my four millimeter pattern and not add those extra beads. What I am going to need at this point is my wire protector and the wire protector is going to get added on to the end of my cording here and then I'm going to attach it to my chain. And it really doesn't matter what kind of chain, you could just bead the whole way up the back, you don't need to attach to chain, but the chain has that modern look to it that we're going for, so we're going to attach it to some chain. And I'm going to go up the back of my wire protector with my needle. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to link my end link of my chain into my wire protector. I'm going to take my needle through that last link of chain 
as well as down the other side of the wire protector. That's going to link it all in. What I want to do then to reinforce that area is I'm going to go back through my seed bead here, my last seed bead that was in place. I'm going to go back through my four and I'm going to circle around through my last of my spike beads here. What I'm going to do with my wire protector also is give it a little pinch so that way when I pinch it together the two ends are together. It's going to sit nicer next to my seed bead. To reinforce it then again I'm going to go back around all of my beads down here and I'm going back through that last dagger and when I go back through that last one of that spike dagger beads I'm going to come back up the other side. This is also going to work to tighten the thread. I'm going to go back through that last one there. When I come up, I'm going to cross over here and go back through my wire protector. Back through the chain and back down the other side of the wire protector. Then what I'm going to do is just knot off my thread. I'm going to go through my seed bead that's on the other side. And then I'm going to start just doing half hitch knots and a little bit of glue. Once I have that side done, we're going to flip over to the other side and do the same thing as well. And that's going to finish off the section of our spikes there, of our icicles. And we'll get ready then to do the clasp on the chain after I'm done getting the other side all finished up. So I finished attaching the wire protector to the other side of my chain and now all I'm going to do is I'm going to finish off my chain. This chain that I've used, this link chain here, is big enough that I can actually fit my lobster clasp into one of the links of the chain. So I don't really need to worry about connecting the a jump ring or anything on this side. If you do want, sometimes you can create a little decorative piece with a bead or so on the end, but I'm just gonna leave it free so that way it can work it as an extender chain and I can link it on at whatever length I want. On the other side, since it is a fairly thick chain, I'm just gonna use a jump ring and attach to that. You can also use a split ring if you'd rather do that, but I just have a jump ring here that I'm gonna open up and I'm gonna to attach to my lobster and then what I'm going to do is attach it to the last link of my chain on one of my sides. Because there's no side right or left of this necklace, it doesn't matter which side I attach it to. If you do have a front and back side of your necklace, then you want to attach it usually to the right hand side that's traditional for the necklaces. Then all I'm going to do is I'm going to take that lobster, open it up, and I can attach to the last link of my chain. So I have a nice here 17 inch necklace with those spikes and creating that icicle look for a little bit of a four and a half inch section versus if you want to use the whole strand you're going to have a longer section yet. So you can actually layer these two, they would look nice one layered on top of the other. Again because of the color choice it gives it a softer look than just using the spikes or the daggers, whatever you choose to use all at once but it gives a great modern look to it and it really doesn't take that long because you are attaching to a lot of chain in the back. So if you have bought spikes and you're not really sure what to do with them, hopefully this gives you some ideas. If you haven't bought them, you can buy them at our bead stores. You can check out the locations at potomacbeads.com. If you can't get to one of our physical locations, you can always shop online at thebeadco.com. You can also follow us on YouTube so you get regular project updates and also follow us on Facebook so that way you can share your creations with us as well as share ideas or input. We love to hear from you. So thanks a lot for watching and you have a great rest of your day and enjoy this fun icicle necklace.